The world's dominant superpower suffered a humiliating defeat on September 3, 1783, when 13 of their colonies that had declared their independence as a sovereign nation seven years earlier drove them back to England. But there was still plenty of bad blood between them, and the British continued to interfere with America's ability to trade and expand, and began intercepting ships and kidnapping sailors. The situation became intolerable, and on June 18, 1812, America declared war on Great Britain. Determined not to be humiliated again, in late August 1814, the British set fire to the White House and burned Washington to the ground, forcing President Madison and the government to flee. The capital destroyed, they then turned their focus on Baltimore. Now the British believed all that stood between them and ultimate victory were the defenders at Fort McHenry. Throughout the war, prisoners were being taken on both sides, including William Beans, a prominent physician, who was being held prior to hanging on one of the British warships in Baltimore Harbor. The doctor's family retained another prominent American, attorney Francis Scott Key, to negotiate a prisoner exchange. Although Key was successful in negotiating the release, he had overheard the Royal Navy's plan to decimate Fort McHenry and so they were held on board and would not be released until the fort had been utterly destroyed. Commander George Armistead had commissioned a widow, Mary Pickersgill, to make a flag to fly from the highest rampart of the fort. It was to be the largest flag in the country, measuring 30 by 42 feet, so that the British would see it from miles away. At dawn on September 13, 1814, the full fury of the world's most powerful navy began their devastating assault. Hour after hour, they launched over 2,000 exploding cast iron bombs and Congreve rockets at Fort McHenry. Five hours, 10 hours, non-stop for 25 hours, determined to utterly destroy it and bring down that offensive symbol that we called our flag. He, a deeply religious man, watched helplessly, wondering if there was any way that the flag could stand. All he could do was pray, and hope that in the red glare of the explosions, he might catch a glimpse of those stars and stripes. His consolation was that as long as the bombing continued, well, then the fort must not have fallen. The powder magazine, which held over 250,000 pounds of gunpowder, Essentially, the area's entire supply took a direct hit, but the bomb miraculously failed to explode. Torrential but providential rains kept many of the bombs from exploding that night. Amazingly, only four American soldiers were killed despite the barrage. The British guns finally went silent at dawn the following morning, and as the mist and smoke lifted, Key looked anxiously. There in all its glory, that banner of freedom still waved. It was in those moments that he wrote the poem that would one day become our national anthem. Yeah. 